All right, so this video, I'm kind of complaining a little bit about React Query because uh, remember back I made like a refactoring video where some person was working with the Star Wars API and I was trying to just do something simple. Let me refresh the page. Um, let me show you. When you fetch from the Star Wars API, you get back a list of people, right? So if I look at these results, we get 10 people and all these people have links to where you can get their species. So like, for example, um, I don't know who, what character I'm looking at here, but there's characters and they are from different planets and they have different species. So like this is a home world. And some of the home worlds are shared between characters and some of them aren't. So when you first get this request, you would then have to make a bunch of additional requests to fetch the home worlds and fetch the species of all of these different things. So here, just notice that I'm fetching four additional HTTP requests just to get all the home worlds back for this 10, these 10 people. Okay, so it's not the most efficient way. Um, and there's a lot of things you can do. You could set up like a, a server proxy that caches this data and hits the Star Wars API on your behalf. And you could do the caching on like your own proxy server. You could do the caching client side so you don't have to keep on fetching all these things all the time. Um, and the fact that we need to cache these home worlds, like I thought React Query would be a great uh, library to use because it's, it's all hyped about caching stuff and whatever. But when you actually start using it, you realize that it cannot be used for this scenario because it doesn't support like normalization of requests. I don't know if I said the right word there, but there's like a, on the, if you go to the actual like React Query GitHub page and go to the issues, there's like a whole thread of how they're not going to support it. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that like, there's no way to use React Query to have it cache these underlying numbers. Like you have to like write your own cache to basically cache any sub subsequent requests to home worlds. Okay. So let me just kind of walk you through the code real quick because at this point, I don't know if I'm even making sense. So when you, right now I'm using use query and I'm giving it the home worlds to fetch, right? So let me take a step back. There's one query here, which I'm getting the people that I need to fetch. And I get back that array of people data, right? So this has like results in it and that has the 10 people here. That's cool. React Query is going to fetch that and it's going to cache that so it doesn't have to keep on fetching that same URL every time you go back and forth between your pagination. That works great. But the issue is, is that when you have to fetch all of the home worlds, how do you cache those, right? Well, you think you could just use, you know, a use query hook and you pass it the home worlds URLs that you want to fetch. Um, unfortunately, this is going to act as like a key of multiple values, if that makes sense. So like when you use the use query, the first argument is an array of keys. And those keys, I believe, can be in whatever order that you want. Um, but basically what I'm saying is it's only going to cache the combination of keys you provide it. So in this case, 1, 8, 2, and 20. If I go to the next page and I happen to fetch an eight or two, that's not gonna come from cache. Because if there is a different home world that is included in the next result set, it's gonna be a completely different cache hit. Um, so one, eight, two, and 20. If I go to the next page here, notice that we get back one, 21, 14, 22. We get a bunch of different stuff, one and eight. So the overlap of one and eight, those were fetched again from the back end because again, React Query doesn't support like normalization of, of data. So I guess what I'm getting at is like, you start using these libraries and like they're hyped up to be like awesome and like they do all this caching for you. And then you reach like a really basic edge case where you literally can't use the caching mechanisms of this library everyone's hyping up. So you start questioning like, why am I using this library to begin with? I'm not saying it's a bad library, but it's just like, you think it would be supported by something as basic as this. And I, I kind of talked to some people in my Discord to try to find a solution to this. And their approach was this function here, you have to basically build your own cache. So like I'd have to basically say like const home world cache is equal to an array. And then, right, so we could either, you know, cache at this level or we can cache at the actual like Axios request level. Maybe it makes more sense to do it here. So if I were to abstract all this away into a separate function, Called like const fetch home world. This is going to be a function that does that. 
And we are going to basically say if, uh, I'm going to say const results is equal to this. And I'm going to say if we haven't seen it, so if it's not already in the cache, then we're going to go ahead and do the actual request here. Otherwise, we're going to return the cache. So let's just do this. Home world URL. Make sure I cache this thing. So I'm going to get the cache with this key. Go ahead and put results in here. Um, I probably have a syntax error. Let me just double check what I'm doing wrong here. Oh, this is a anonymous function without any. I got to put some errors here. Go ahead and do this. All right, so what we did is we basically created a, a wrapper for our requests that are fetching from the home worlds. And to prevent the UI from like refetching this data every single time, I had to build my own cache, which means I have to build my own like mechanism for cleaning up the cache or putting a timeout on the cache and cleaning it, um, clearing it and stuff. So like, let me just make sure I can get this working so that my example makes sense. So instead of actually calling that, I'm gonna call the cache method now which is kind of just like a memo, let's be honest. Um, so hopefully, let me make sure I didn't break everything, which I did. So let's go back and try to figure out why that's not working. So I loop over all the home worlds to fetch here, and I map over them to fetch home world, and I get a home world URL. If it's not, okay, so obviously if it's not in the cache, I need to do the request. That's where I messed up. So let's make sure this works. All right, so if I go forward a page, Notice that it doesn't fetch one or eight because that is already in the cache. And if I go back, it should fetch absolutely nothing from home worlds. And if I go forward, it should also fetch absolutely nothing from home worlds. And you might say like, what's the point of this? Because your cache set is going to be the same as you're going back and forth pages. But as I keep going forward and forward through pages, there's a high chance I've already seen those home worlds, right? So they're going to be in cache, like right there, 18, 9, 34. Like if I keep going forward, I'm going to get less and less cache hits. Honestly, I don't know if this is a good example, but <laughs> um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. So on page seven, we got like one, two, three, four, five, six requests. Um, we're not really reducing the requests too much. So let me flip this back to the old approach real quick which I believe was this. And I want to kind of compare on page seven, how many requests are we making? Actually, I have a better way to do this. Let's just count. I'm going to say count, let requests, total requests equal zero. And every time I don't have a cache hit, I'm going to go ahead and increment that and I'm going to print it out. We're just going to have some fun in this video right now. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to go back to the very first page and I want to go to the console and I want to show you like as I keep going forward through pages, so page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven. Let me make sure I'm on the right page. All right, so page seven was the last one. We get about 43 total API requests for home worlds. So let me just kind of mark that down. And if I wasn't using this cache stuff, so instead, if I just put a false here, like, and just always do it. Like, I don't care if there's a cache or not. Just, uh, or sorry, just put a true here and always do the request. Let's see if we get the 43 when we get the page seven. So I'm going to refresh the page. I'm going to go forward to page one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to go to network. We're on page seven. And notice that in the console, we did 55 total requests. So honestly, I wouldn't like <laughs> this video, like, just. This is just a thought provoking video. Like, obviously, we saved like five, let's see, 55 minus 43. I don't know what that math is because I'm not smart anymore. So it's like 12. We've saved a total of 12 requests, which, in the grand scheme of things, like, who cares, right? But if for whatever reason, every page, like every character had a quite a big overlap of homeworlds, we probably would have saved a lot more requests. And hopefully I did that right. Call me out if I did that, that calculation wrong or if I did that kind of total request thing wrong. But I guess my point I'm trying to make is like we're using this caching library that's supposed to like be awesome and cache stuff, but it doesn't support caching the things that you want it to cache. And you have to like write your own little cache hook just to cache it from requesting over and over and over again all of these sub-resources from your main API resource. Um... 
yeah, this was, I'm not saying React Query is bad. I'm still going to use it. It's still an awesome library. <laughs> I'm just kind of complaining and venting a little bit that it's like, you think it would support something like this, but I guess, you know, there's people out there who are a lot smarter than me and have good reasons why they're not supporting it. So I'm going to go ahead and just believe that there's a good reason why they don't support this like normalization cache. Um, but yeah, if you like this type of video where I'm just kind of like talking about stuff, <laughs> you know, let me know. Also, leave a comment below if you want to call me out and say that this was a stupid video and this was a bad example and I shouldn't talk poorly about React Query. If you want to defend it that bad, you can go ahead and leave a bad comment for me. But I'm always open for feedback. Anyway, if you enjoyed watching, be sure to join my Discord if you want to be able to talk to me directly or talk to other people in my community who are trying to learn to code as well and just, you know, be part of a community who's struggling along the way to learn how to code because coding is kind of hard sometimes. And uh, yeah, have a good day and happy coding.